Well, hello Ray Hearn. Hello. Thanks for having Kitchen Songs into your kitchen. It's been a right pleasure. Oh, it's been really lovely, yeah. Some lovely, lovely songs. We've had some good sessions actually in this kitchen in the past, you know, like including another story for another day about Andy Seward setting his double bass on fire in here, but that's... Uh... I've seen, I've seen that. Have you? Yes, yes, when I was recording with Andy, yeah. Ah. That poor double bass, it was very <laughs> sad. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that you've had... Uh, I was wondering whether you actually used the kitchen in that way. Well, we always have, we've always had, since we moved into this house, and it's been 20 years now, and actually it was the same in the other place, but of course a different kitchen. It was a bigger kitchen than the other one. It gets a bit squashed in here, but on New Year's Eve, traditionally, up till very recently, we've always had a big do, since the kids were little, and we've always mm. invited musicians, uh, you know, whoever was... Uh, even if they were on their way to another do, mm. like Andy was that day, um, he brought his bass and he was off somewhere later, but he came here and we had a few tunes and then off he went. And so, you know, you automatically, if they get Gavin in there or the kids get the, the, the whatever device it is on, then we new musicians move into that room and then have to move into here. Yeah. So, the, you know, so the walls are used to hearing music. Yeah. Right, that, um, the song that you did about the kid who mm. um, killed the milkman, yeah. Was, is so affecting, it's so affecting. I was, uh, it sent shivers down me, I have to say. Um, well, it's and meant I, to. Yeah, yeah, although it's, you know, it's got a plenty of pace, hasn't it? Mm. So it's, it's not sort of milking it, shall we say. Well, I hope not, because <laughs> uh, I've never really sung it before. I've sung yeah. it once in a club about uh, a while ago. It wasn't quite finished, you know, mm. and I'm sure you're the same. If, you, mm. if it's not quite finished, you just think, oh, no, leave it, mm. leave it. It will finish itself when mm. it's ready. Yeah. But you do have a, it is a rare talent to take a tune like that that is, is, is so well known. And, uh, and, and I know that know the song well myself, I've sung it many, many times over many years. Um, and, but once we were sort of, um, you know, into the second line, I've, that's all gone yeah. for me and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your song. And it's a, it's a different, it's a new well, creation, trying, it's yeah. relevant. You're trying to reach out to people. I'm not sure it's a rare talent. I think it's the way the tradition <clears throat> has always evolved. Mm. People heard the tunes in a different manner of course uh, from how you can hear them in so many ways today mm. but they heard the tune off a singer and then had to remember it and put their own their own version of it their own villages or their own communities or their own sense of I know a story that could fit that um, and I think that I feel so in some ways and this is controversial I feel that I am a kind of a traditional singer in that I, I don't always take traditional tunes, although I think all those today that we've looked at are traditional tunes. I can, yeah. I can make them up myself now and again. But I just think if you take, a, you take a tune that's been sung thousands and thousands of times, I get the sense that really there's something in it of all that congregation, all that community of people who have sung hmm. it in its many different forms, yes. so many different times. And I've, I've, it nourishes me, that sense. Yeah, I, I suspect that that's irresistible for you because... You're not like a, a lot of writers, are you? I mean, you're, you're not an isolated artist as such, you know. Uh, or, or that's, or tell mm. me if I'm wrong, it, you, it feels more like you are very Only when it uh, attached to, to communities and, and groups. But I've always tried to get a sense of being a community mm. singer um, and writer. And I know that um, often you write deeply personal songs and they don't really represent any local community. Mm. But they kind of, I, I hope that they represent the, the community that made the tune or, or the, the words are in an accent that represents the, the community of South Yorkshire or, or you know, or, or, or if it's about that horrible murder of a milkman, it's about the, the community of the humane, you know. Mm. So I, you're right, I don't see myself as an, as, a, as an individual kind of performer in that sense, just working with a muse. I try to um, I try to work with lots of different sources, and I try and I do write lots of songs with community groups mm. as well, and I, I work in schools and write songs with the kids. So I'm used to that sense of mm. um, of collective endeavour. And then after having said all that, I suppose I've still got the final say on my own song. I suppose it's still got my thumbprint on it at the end. I suppose. Oh, completely. Yeah. What came first? Um, for you creatively, because uh, you're a poet and a songwriter, was it the the poetry or, or the songwriting? I think I was always a frustrated songwriter, I suppose, but it's easy to, in your garret as a kid to 
can sit there writing songs for you can say that i don't think it was ever easy i tried poetry and it was well, absolutely it was dreadful. easy right rubbish you know that's what i meant to say and i'm not sure i've ever written it read I've ever written a decent poem in that sense, but I've I've, writ, I've certainly written quite a few. And but I was up. It was songs, really. I think that I was. Um, I wanted to do songs because I was brought up in an Irish house like you, yeah. and it was a house full of songs, and we, you know, we we sang them from an early age. And when we eventually got a car, we used, me and my brother, who was a musician as well, we used to sit in the car and we just we used to sing the Clancy Brothers albums from A to Z and the Dubliners and and all that so uh, I never thought then of uh, of writing anything and then uh, later I, I moved on to sort of you know um, rock and roll and contemporary singer songwriters and I, and I always was particularly from an early age from about 16 anyway when I started tinkling with the guitar I was really struck by people like James Taylor because he just had such a fantastic <laughs> guitar style and mm -hmm. he didn't use picks and I didn't want to and I thought I don't think I've ever played a song without doing a duff note somewhere or other. But he can. He can, you see him, and he never seems to make a duff note at all. And then in terms of songwriting as well, I thought, oh, that's wonderful if I could write something like that. Mm. But then the the real songwriter who, who blew my, my mind for years was Joni Mitchell. And, uh, and I just thought, because she was because she was a poet as well, mm -hmm. I thought, as well as, a, as having the craft yeah. of songwriting in, and such, in such a stupendous manner mm. and with such marvellous musicianship. She was who I wanted to be for a long time and of right. course it didn't work out. No, no, I was going to say, Ray, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't managed I, it, we, you, but you've managed something so, well, to me, um, much more, uh, well, it, it, it is so based in community and your songs are... I'm always so fascinated with the, the, the balance you have mm. on the old pa sort of pastoral lyrical yeah. kind of uh, approach to songs and the, the industrial, the really gritty yeah. surroundings that, that and you, they're all in there, I suppose aren't so. they, I, a lot of your songs. I hope so. I, what I got out of the, 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 the tradition was the tunes, infinite, mm. infinite, beautiful wealth of tunes that's absolutely, you could never hear them all, you could never know them all and um, all interrelated, all supporting each other, all wonderful. Mm. Um, what I had to work on was uh, what am I going to write about, you know, and, and, it, and it was just history really that, that um, you know, when I, uh, I lived down south for a while and, uh, and I came back up here um, uh, just as uh, Mrs Thatcher was elected and, you know, and Rotherham and Parkgate where I'd been brought up started to be decimated really, steel went, mm. engineering went, coal went, you know, and then there was, a, of course, there was the strike, the, the minor strike, so all that made me think, you know, all these other people write songs about what's, the whole tradition is people having written songs about what's happening to them, mm. you know, that's what I need to be doing, and in the minor strike, uh, a number of us started doing that, and you would be going around the different communities, and folk who'd never written anything in their lives before were, were writing songs mm. um, and, st and still are some of them. Rather a minor support group, bunch of half a dozen, uh, led by a bunch of half a dozen women, wrote songs to get to voice, mm. you know, to voice what was happening to them because they looked at the telly and, and the truth of what was happening was not to be seen. Mm. And the same in the newspapers. And so that kind of, and that kind of solidarity, I didn't work down the pit, you know, mm. but what I could do was was work alongside of them, doing what I what I was more and more beginning to do, which was to write and to yeah. sing. What was the key that eventually and very belatedly uh, made you produce your first CD? Well, that was because I joined a co-op, a cooperative called No Masters. Oh, no Masters, I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they made me do it, really. Well, um, somebody had to. Know, well, you know, <laughs> you, you know what it's like, you just think that's another that's another world that. I used to go to The Rock and mm. watch people like you and Steve and, and, and Vin Garbett and, 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 you know, and Christy Moore and people like that and think, oh, I'd love to be able to do that, you know. Not kind of, never kind of quite clicking that I was doing it elsewhere, yeah. but in different environments, you know. So eventually um, I, I, I joined No Masters and they sort of, um, you know, chivied me into doing it. But it still, takes, it still took a long time because I'm a really slow writer. It takes me a long time, really, to get 
you know, to them. My mm. songs are a bit like Victorian ironmongery, really. They're that, they're that <laughs> yeah. kind of talk. Yes, they know, do. So, they do feel like that. So, you know, it's only years later that I kind of lightened up a bit and tried to, you know, tried to be a bit more throwaway. Yeah. But, you know, I've still got those tendencies to add on to every comma. You're very good at writing dense, lots of quick, fast words that don't have any gaps between, so you've got nowhere to breathe. And mm. I'm sort of wondering, you know, this, it, 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 it is a sign to me that you've got fantastic lung capacity. <laughs> how, how do you keep fit, Ray? That's a, that's a nice way of saying you've got a big gob, <laughs> which I totally concur with. Well, I do, I'm no, always you, kept you, fit. No, you're slightly too... I'm always kept fit, and I do run. Right, OK. I did wonder, but, um, yeah. But, um, you know, all those words together, that's probably bad writing. You know, perhaps oh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of particular songs that I, I, I know, love. And, 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 you, and I never realised until you've just told me, you know, if I hadn't done that, if I'd have written more sensibly, I might have had lots more people singing my songs. So it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty silly thing, really, to do. And I will bear that in mind. You know, so... so it's, a, songs, it's, a, it's a very lovely and endearing, for endearing folk, feature. Later. Songs for folk with good lungs. I'll, I'll have to write my next, my next album. So... Uh, I, you know, I think the, my, the, the writing, it is influenced by, by poetry, that's mm. a fact as well. Mm. What I wanted to do was write a, when I, when, I wrote poem, when I write a poem, I want to write a piece that's musical, that's mm. a song-like. When I write a song, I want to write a piece that's poetic, that's like a poem. That, and I don't achieve this, I'm sure, very often, but it would be nice to see some of them standing on their own. You know, like, like some, somebody like Burns, you know, you go to yeah. his collected works and I love the fact that the that that majority of them are songs and the majority, in fact, they're all singable. They're all sung, I think. Yes. I, bu I bought that collected Burns album, there's about 300 songs and it's absolutely fantastic. It's the best yeah. thing I've ever bought. Well, I do think you have songs like that. Harry Appleblossom being a case in point. I mean, to me, it it's... Um, I was only made the connection yesterday, but he reminds me of uh, Lyndon Lee. The only other Barbara. person who's com com who I remember complimenting me on that song was Liam O'Flynn. Liam Ogre O'Flynn. Well, no better man. Well, it must be uh, and great. He, he won't even remember, I'm quite sure. And it was at The Rock, probably yeah. one of the first times I ever played, and I think I was the uh, <clears throat> I was the support. You'll have done it, you said, many times. Yeah. Liam was on, and there were about ten people in the audience. And I, I, I was oh, it's an absolute mm. tragedy, you know, one of the mm. greatest musicians we've ever oh, had yeah. and he said I liked what you did with that Wexford car and uh, he wouldn't have said it if he didn't really mean it you well, can be I sure of that too that's flipping it so that is was, that on uh, your publicity no it isn't it isn't ah. no 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 it isn't oh, get it I, up just, there. I just basked in that for, for <laughs> a long time and he wouldn't even remember the occasion probably because he was probably thinking what am I doing here playing to <laughs> seven people or ten or whatever it was oh, but anyway it's tough it happens to us all <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> That's, well, Ray Hearn, um, it's been really, really lovely talking to you. Before we go, um, you just tell us what you've got planned for the near future or the or the long term. Well, it just give it, give us an yeah. idea what you might be up to. And but well, I want to say thank you very much for having us in your oh, kitchen. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been. A, I wish I. I wish this is all I had to do. It would be absolutely fantastic, and as well as keep putting the kettle on. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I packed in the full-time job last year after, you know, after trying to do, uh, trying to do the music and the writing and everything and work and it's impossible. Mm. But you know, probably at the worst time imaginable. Mm. But, um, risky. Um, risky, but you know, I, I <laughs> just thought, God, if you don't do it now, you're going to be too old to do it, man. You know, get get a grip, like make yourself have it and do it. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm, t I'm doing workshops in schools and. With community groups and um, a few conferences which is very terrifying you know you go along to a conference sit there and write something while it's happening and then perform it at the end that's a killer a boat brave fantastic yeah, yeah, challenge must, it's a fantastic yeah. challenge you know so so I'm, I'm bitting and batting but at the minute it's, it's wonderful you know i'm really quite enjoying it uh, and i've i'm working on a batch of songs for another album because it'll soon be my turn again in terms of No Masters to do another album. Brilliant. Well, I really look forward to the next one. The last two, Broad Street and um, Wrong Sunshine, fantastic. That's um, very kind of you, Maggie. That's another one for my little notebook. <laughs> Liam O'Flynn and Maggie Boyle. Rayho, thank you very much. Pleasure.